Hello Lobos and Canvas learners. This video is going to show you uh, some suggestions on how to organize your modules, purely suggestions, how to lock modules for future dates, and how you can add icons to both your modules and to your assignment and page names. So the first thing is a suggestion on organization. I actually already, already have a video on this on my YouTube channel that talks about weekly organization, but that is the way I would organize it at this point in time, especially for those of you who are looking at remote instruction. And so what I've done here is you can see that this one was a daily Zoom links. So this is something that is not going to go away. That is going to stay at the top of my module list no matter what else is going on. But then down here, I have a week one, a week two, and a week three. And I've given it a very specific name. Week one, welcome back, August 25th through the 28th. And then in that module, I've made text headers. Tuesday, 825, Wednesday, 826, Thursday, 827, and Friday, 828. And then underneath there are different activities that are for that specific day. Then the next week, I did the same thing. Except now I'm ready to start my unit. So it's week two, unit one, and then I would put in the name of my unit. So week two, unit one, thinking like a historian, August 31st through September 4th. Repeat text headers with the dates and then put in the assignments for each day. And then just keep repeating that. Now, I know what you, you may be thinking, but Misty, sometimes things don't go as planned and I don't get to things. Well, here's the great thing. Because you've only put a date on the text header, if you need to rearrange, you can simply click and drag this down to another date or even another module. Then you would just need to go in and make sure to adjust the due dates. I do not recommend putting the date in the name of the actual page or assignment. I recommend instead to use the text header. That way, all you have to do is click and drag and then adjust the due date. You would not have to actually edit the name of the assignment. Also, if you, if you add a date in the name of the assignment, when it shows up on the calendar, if the date you assign it and the due date are not the same, it can be very confusing for students. So, one of the concerns that people have mentioned is because we need to take attendance and part of attendance is based on engagement and what the students do during that day, how do you keep them from working ahead? So one option would be to um, set your module you can go to edit and then right here under requirements say students must complete all of these requirements students must move through the requirements in sequential order and then just so again update the module and when I go to student view you'll see here that everything else is grayed out now until I do this first assignment and once I have viewed it then I can hit next and that should open up the next thing. So when I go back to the module now, you can see that that has opened up. If I want it to be um, even more locked down, I can add as many requirements there as I want so that it forces the kids to do things in a specific order. Um, unfortunately, you do have to add each of those items as a requirement. Um, I thought maybe it wouldn't make you do that, but it does. It makes you add each item specifically as a requirement here. So just keep in mind kind of the order in which you have things in your actual uh, module if you want to use this option. Another option that you have would be to only publish the content for that day. Now keep in mind that what that means for you is that you would have to come in each day and publish that content. So that may be something you want to do, but maybe not. Another option here would be to add a page at the end of each day that says stop here. You have completed today's work. So that would be as simple as going to plus page, new page, and call it stop here. And then add it there. And I'd probably try to find a cute picture. Let's see the stop sign. And 
add that in. And then I would say you have completed two days work. Great job. Something like that. Just so that the students know they have completed today's work. They do not need to move on. And then that gives them the indicator to stop. So that way, the next day, they, or they don't hit this next button, which is going to actually move them into tomorrow's work. So that's just a couple of different ways that you can arrange your, your modules. Um, another option would be, obviously, to, to break days up, but I think that's a lot of extra work. And what's nice, too, right here on this stop here, you can duplicate this page and just add it as many times as you want. Just edit and take out the word copy. So if you say edit, you just delete the word copy, update, publish, and there's that same page already made. You do not have to remake it again. Okay? All right. Another option that you have is to actually lock your modules. So this will actually, it won't help you on a day-to-day -day your kids working ahead, but it will help you if your kids, if you want to go ahead and have everything published for your year, but you don't want your students to get to it until a certain time. So you can see down here that this says will unlock on August 31st. And so to do that, you go to the module and hit the triple dots and then say edit. And right here it says lock until and you pick a date. So I just picked 7 a.m. on that Monday morning of August 31st. And then same thing here, it is going to unlock on September 8th at 7 a.m. All right, so that's some different ways that you can organize your modules, and it also talks about how you can lock your modules. The last thing that this video is going to talk about is icons. So you'll notice that in my modules and in my assignments, I have these emojis. And what I did is when I went in to edit an assignment or a doc, so I'm going to come here, and at the name, I did Control Command Space, and that actually searches this built-in emoji browser and I'm going to type in stop sign right there. I'm going to pick that image and update. And you'll see that it adds it automatically to this. And what I did up here is I made an announcement that explains what those different icons mean for my students. And this is just kind of a, a visual reminder to help your students when they're looking at their modules to know that this is something I need to read this is actual computer work that I'm going to do. This is something I need to look at. Um, this is a discussion. This is something I'm going to be writing, like taking notes on. Um, this is a quiz. I haven't added anything for that. There's another discussion. So again, just kind of indicating to your students what they're going to be doing. And not for everybody, and it's not required, but some of you may find that helpful. You do need to make sure, though, that you share that icon list with your students so that they do basically a key so they know what these different emojis stand for. So I covered a lot in this video. If you have any questions about how to organize your modules, if you want some tips or suggestions, please feel free to reach out to me. If you um, want more information on locking your modules and kind of the pros and cons of that, again, feel free to reach out. I also encourage you to talk to your team. Consistency is key here. And the more consistent you are, the easier this will be for your students. Have a great day, and as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.